Hello and welcome to Love My Poland. Allow me to start off today by telling you how much I truly adore Polish food. Big surprise, Russell loves Poland and Polish food. There's really not much I won't eat here. However, despite the abundance of tasty food everywhere, there are a few things that I refuse to touch. So today we're going to take a little departure from videos that normally focus on what I love so much about the country and Today, I'd like to go into being brutally honest again uh, with seven foods I personally cannot stand. And if you're wondering why I'm shooting this episode so controversial, so negative, it's actually a response to a direct request from one of my most faithful viewers who's been a fan of the channel from the very beginning for over four years. And he just so happens to share a great name, the same name as I have, Russell. So today, we are counting down from seven to one in order of hate here. Please don't kill me, my Polish viewers, and please don't tell me that after watching the video, I don't belong here anymore. Uh, it's just my honest, brutal opinion. Here we go. Again, we're starting from seven and working our way up to number one, and number seven is potato pancakes. Okay. Potato pancakes or platsky zimniaczane are a huge round kind of hash brown, right? I mean, what could go wrong with hash browns? How could anyone not like hash browns? Well, the trouble is every single time I've had the chance to sit down and eat them with somebody, whether it's in a restaurant or at someone's house, they're always soaked and dripping with oil. They're the oiliest things I've ever eaten in my life. The outer part of this potato pancake, you know, it's usually crispy and well seasoned and it's delicious. But the center always seems to be a little bit soggy with the potatoes tasting a bit undercooked. Potato pancakes do a real number on my stomach. I, I just can't deal with all that oil. It just feels so unhealthy. I don't feel well afterwards and, you know, I just can't go there. But I will tell you, there's another variety. If you throw some meat and yummy sauce on those potato pancakes and you make it more of the Hungarian style, which in Polish is called Placek po Vingersku, I am all in every time and I highly recommend you try them. Number six, old fashioned cheesecake or Staropolski Sernik. If you have ever had Italian or American cheesecake, you know that the recipe calls for tons and tons of sugar and it's undoubtedly highly unhealthy for you. However, once you've become accustomed to eating such cheesecake back in the US, that super sweet, unhealthy cheesecake, if you're like me, you're going to struggle to appreciate Polish cheesecake. You know, it's great, it looks good, it's got a chocolate layer and on top it's got some uh, little kind of shavings of almond on it, it looks great, but the problem is it's just not sweet enough. The minute it hits your mouth, you feel like you've got some kind of unsweet, chalky substance. You just, your mind is expecting that creaminess. You know, a good cheesecake should go into your mouth and just turn into a straight cream. This one doesn't do that. You feel like you're eating some kind of odd, slightly sweet cheese and it just doesn't feel like cheesecake. It's served at every party, it's served everywhere and I have to always pass on this. I can't do it, it's too dry, it's not sweet enough, sorry. Number five, do you recognize this? If you've seen my episode on barbecuing or grilling out in Poland, you might know that I am not, I mean, I am truly not the biggest fan of blood sausage or blood pudding, which is called in Polish, kashanka. Let's cover this one more time so you get the picture. This type of sausage is made from, I'm going to be brutally honest again here, pig's blood mixed together with buckwheat, with herbs and spices, together with other special additions like diced up liver, various animal organs and entrails, where it's all kind of thrown together and squeezed and stuffed into pig intestine casings. Are you hungry yet? Are you feeling hungry with this description? Poles love it. They usually wrap it up in tin foil and throw it onto the grill and, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes later, they take it off and they just, just love it. My kids take after me on this one. They can't stand Kashanka and they said it perfectly when they said that the taste of this sausage reminds them of that hit of blood taste they got when they lost their first tooth. I don't know how to describe that taste. You know, I've tried it several times according to numerous recipes where my Polish friends and family promised me, they say, Russell, you have to try it according to the real recipe. Try it my style. And they say it's going to be different and that I'll love their method of preparation. 
And you know, each time it happens the same way, I taste that strong, brutal blood taste, and it's just one bite, it's out, and that's it. I just can't do kasharka. I cannot understand your love for this sausage. It's really sad information, I know. Sorry. Number four, sprote or sprats. I really don't know if it's a regional thing or if it's an all Poland thing, but practically everyone I know around Częstochowa here enjoys a good sprat. They're cheap and they're tasty and you know they're apparently pretty healthy for you. And they are cheap. I bought these six sprats right here for about 95 grosze, which comes to about 25 cents. And you know, it never ceases to amaze me how Poles can just munch them down like french fries. In fact, every time we go up to the Polish seaside, at those Polish seaside destinations, you can find a kind of booth there where you order them right alongside fries. They come in the same container and there's nearly always a long line of people waiting to buy them and get them. I've tried them and I just cannot stand the smoky order. This smokiness is what gets me. It's an overwhelming smokiness. You know, they stink. They don't taste all that great. Trying them once was enough for me for a whole lifetime, but thanks anyway. I'm gonna pass on the sprats. Number three, pickled vegetables, or sałatka naddunajska in this case. During my first years in Poland, I quickly became aware of the fact that Poles love pickling things and smoking foods. I mean, it's obvious when you really sit down and think about it, there are long winters here, eight, nine months sometimes of coldness, and preserving foods just makes sense, right? I mean, I get it. But throwing a ton of diced vegetables into a jar just does not work for me. You know, when I look into the jar, I see a variety of vegetables. Here we have uh, carrots, we've got some onion, some cucumber, uh, what else am I missing? Bell pepper in there, and it looks really appealing. It looks wonderful, but here's the problem. Everything tastes the same. My mind wants to instinctively try to kind of differentiate these vegetables and you know, I want, it's, it's the mix of vegetables separately. I, I just want to go there and taste the carrot and taste the bell pepper, but it doesn't happen that way. It is a vinegar base and all I taste is vinegar, vinegar, vinegar. It's just too vinegary for me. I don't know how people appreciate this. Again, on the aisles, you want to pick it up, you want to buy it, looks great, but it just tastes too much vinegar. Number two, pickled herring. Growing up in Alabama, I just wasn't raised on that much fish. The only fish that I really experienced and encountered during my meal times were tuna fish from a can that usually went into tuna salad or fried catfish at the local seafood restaurant. And as much as I adore Poland, I just cannot wrap my head around the love that you have for this pickled fish. You know, but I am amazed at the availability of herring in the shops. You've got herring and mustard sauce, you've got herring and tomato sauce, I've seen herring and dill sauce, and we even have my least favorite, herring marinated in oil or vinegar. Vinegar again. The first thing that I see, and you might laugh at me on this one, when I look at this jar of herring, it resembles to me a skinned and pickled snake skin. It looks like somebody cut up snake and put it in a jar, it does not look good at all. Does anyone else see that but me? Maybe I'm just a weirdo, I have no idea. But when you open this jar, the smell is horrendous. My problem with herring is that the initial smell and first bite remind me so much of being near a dirty, smelly river and that fishy odor of this snack is just off the charts for me. I just can't do it. Poles do claim though that herring is the perfect snack for long parties with plenty of vodka, you know, like an all night wedding reception, for example. You know, no, I'm good here. So if you're a fish lover, you're gonna be in the right place here in Poland, you're gonna love this country. This is just not for me. The number one food in Poland that I've had the unfortunate opportunity to try was a dish called Czernina. Czernina soup translates in English to simply blood soup. And it's said to be one of the oldest soup recipes in Poland. Czernina is normally made with the blood of duck, it's sometimes made with the blood of goose, but it also sometimes calls for rabbit blood. This blood soup is seasoned with a variety of vegetables, it has herbs and spices in it, often has noodles in it as well. I remember uh, the experience, my first try, and the only try, it was over 10 years ago. Uh, it was at someone's house, it was at a party, and uh, the one I tried was duck blood soup, 
And I remember mine had lots of carrots and noodles in it. It looked great. When I sat down, it smelled good. It was wonderful. But again, that first spoonful in my mouth, blood, just like Kashank with that blood taste. The best comparison I could give you would be with this blood soup, like ordering the rawest steak possible, taking the steak and squeezing out all the blood and juice onto your plate, pouring that blood and juice into a bowl, taking a spoon of it and just eating it that way. It is nasty, nasty, nasty in my opinion. And fortunately, it's becoming harder and harder to find Chanina on restaurant menus in Poland. There are people that, young people that have never even heard of it or tried it, but it does exist. Remember the name Chanina and stay far away from it. Well, there you have it. Those were my seven all-time worst Polish foods that I never ever plan to try again. In the nearest future, to make up for this hate, I'm going to be making another video with my seven all-time favorite foods. So please do check out that one so I don't seem like such a hater over here. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you're not offended. If you have not subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you. Click the button somewhere right here on the Consulate Republic of Poland and Las Vegas sign that I have so you don't miss out on future episodes. See you next time. Thanks for watching.